Hello and welcome to Rob from the Internet Talks About Beer, a show where we discuss different styles of beer, beer histories, beer flavor profiles, we give shout outs to breweries we think make exceptional beer, and we talk about whatever else comes to mind during the course of the conversation. I'm Rob from the Internet. Let's talk about beer. All right, joining me today is 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 a repeat guest, someone who who was not thoroughly embarrassed to be on the first time. They agreed <laughs> to be on the second time. So uh, today is is uh, joining me is uh, Brittle Star, uh, otherwise known as Stuart Reynolds. He's uh, I, I would consider him a friend of mine. I mean, sure. I sent him beer and he drank it. So uh, that, that's that's what uh, that's that's the low bar that I have for calling someone a friend. Uh, if you would, uh, <laughs> Stuart, tell me a little bit about yourself. Sure. What you do when you're not talking to people about uh, beer? Yeah. Well, I think you know you and I have the same similar styles of uh, threshold for friendships, and that is uh, if you feel you've sent someone beer and you think they're your friend. See, so yeah, conversely, I think if someone sends me beer, then they're my friend. That's, that's basically, it's a transaction is what's happening. That's right. <laughs> uh, yeah. So basically what I do is uh, for the past nine years, I've been creating uh, social media videos, content in general, and um, it's been a weird ride and a weird job, but uh, it's a fun job and I get to kind of get up in the morning and just decide to make stuff and create stuff. So I'm pretty lucky. And then when I'm not doing that, I talk about beer. Not really. I usually just drink it. Not really. I just talk. Just I, I just, it, yeah. yeah, there's a lot, a lot of talking involved. Yeah. <laughs> There's a lot of talking, but not necessarily about the beer itself. Probably. Unlike this show. <laughs> well, I mean, not really even unlike this show, because we'll talk about the beer for a few minutes, and then invariably we'll go off in some other direction sure. like we did last time. Sure. So, you know. Yeah, so uh, so so uh, today we are going to be talking about uh, one of my favorite beers of, uh, I guess, 2021, 2022. Uh, it's from uh, Spearhead Brewing. It's their Oatmeal Cream Ale. And, you know, I haven't opened mine yet, but a certain certain guest of mine who will remain un, unnamed has already opened and is drinking his. Well, the thing is, Rob, is that I like the beer, except there's only half a pint glass in it. That's it. Weirdly, someone had drank the other half. That's so bizarre, isn't it? It's a low fill can. It's got to be. That's what it is. <laughs> So for people who don't know, typically a cream ale does not have oatmeal in it. This is a uh, this is a a variation on it uh, done by uh, by uh, the folks up at Spearhead. Uh, cream ale, for people who don't know, is the only true North American beer style. It was invented in North America in the 1800s. Really, it's a bastardization. Yes, it's a bastardization between uh, a German uh, lager and. Uh, I can't remember what the other one is. Some some other sort of ale. Yeah, it uh, cropped up in the 1800s, uh -huh. um, and it was it was considered one of those styles that was highly localized. So if you had a cream ale, say in Chicago, it'd be different than a cream ale, say in Toronto. Right. Um, over over the last you know over the last uh, couple hundred years or so, though, it's uh, it's equalized out. And most people, when they make a cream ale, you can pretty much know what you're going to get. It's going to be this you know this this light straw colored beer. Um, it's going to be light bodied. Um, you know, it's going to be, uh, it's going to be lagered, even though, uh, it's technically an ale, it's going to be, it's going to be slow fermented with, uh, with, with, with care and time taken. Uh, it's going to be very low bitter. It's going to be fairly, fairly, um, fairly low alcohol, anywhere between 4.3 and 5.6 ish, uh, mm -hmm. ABV. Mm -hmm. I think this one comes in at 5.4. 5.4. So it's, yeah. It's, yeah. Yeah. It's right there. Yeah, it's uh, you know, it's uh, it, it should be, it shouldn't be cloudy. It should be clear and brilliant. And you know, this one looks pretty much that way. Um, this one's going to be a little darker than typical. Typically, it's going to be like a really light yellowish color, kind of like uh, like all you know, your your Millers and your Buds and and that kind of stuff. But it's going to have a different flavor. So you know those, um, uh, you know the you ever see you ever see those dogs that have a biscuit on their nose and they're just waiting, they're waiting for the per for their owner to tell them it's okay to eat the biscuit. You know what I'm talking about? It's okay to drink the beer. Yeah, so I've got the pint on my nose, just waiting. <laughs> That's a long intro for this beer. Uh, it is a long intro for this beer, but this is a fantastic beer. So go ahead. Uh, Cheers. Im imbibe, my friend. Cheers. So you should get um, on on the aroma of it. If, if If you're like me and you stick your nose in your beer, mm. you shouldn't get a whole lot of aroma on it. Uh, there'll be a very light hop aroma. Um, I mean, almost non-existent. You might get a little bit of a, like a bready or biscuity flavor to it, but, uh, because of the oatmeal, it's going to mask a lot of that. Um, 
the dominant flavor uh would be would be from the pale malts and it should just give it some sweetness um you might get a little bit of caramel flavored in it, but not yeah. a whole lot. This is a this is a nice sweet uh, beer. It pairs it pairs well with things like seafood. What's well, interesting with this beer? It's interesting you say sweet because it's to me when I had my first sip right now. <laughs> that's it was just <laughs> <laughs> yeah sure sure <laughs> um, is that I I found that the the taste stopped immediately. Like I'm not a very good person to describing these types of things, but. Like I drank it and instead of having that lingering taste in my mouth, I kind of, I drank it and I saw it and it was like, and it's, it was done. Right. It's got a very fast finish on it. Yeah. So it doesn't, it doesn't hang around. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and you should get just a little bit of bitterness on the finish from, yeah. from the hops. Uh, yeah. Yeah. It was like, have you, have you ever like put a stone in your mouth when you're a kid and like sucked on a stone? <laughs> Yeah, when I was a kid, yes, right. yes, when I was a kid. Yeah, like <laughs> not like last week or anything. That'd be ridiculous. Not like last week, yeah. Uh, yeah, but that's it. Had a similar like there's a there's a sort of like a it tastes a little bit like stone to me. I don't know if it does to anybody else. I don't know why, but it just did. Yeah, well, you know, um, yeah. So uh, <laughs> <laughs> that's a very diplomatic like how- diplomatic response to that. That's a good observation. One that's incredibly wrong. Uh, but it's incredibly good, incorrect, but, but good but for hey, you. Everyone, everyone's got a different <laughs> taste palette, man. <laughs> uh, cream ale is related to a pale lager, generally brewed to be light and refreshing. Yeah, this one is, it's light and refreshing. Yeah. Uh, because of the, cl- that, that quick, clean finish, uh, it doesn't, doesn't hang around. Um, it, it gets that kind of refreshing bit. Um, hop and malt flavor should be subdued. But that's open to uh, interpretation depending on the, uh, the the brewery. And with this one being an oatmeal cream ale, you should get a little bit more of a – the mouthfeel should be a little heavier than it would be for just a standard mm. cream ale. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, that's that's the nice thing about oats. They they they, uh, they lend themselves to uh, increasing head retention and the, the, the mouthfeel of a beer so it doesn't feel as thin. Uh, and, and I know sometimes the beer terminology for the way things are is a little weird. It's like, well, how can how can it taste thin? Well, you'll know when you have a beer that's like water; it tastes thin, right? And then you have you have you have yourself a stout, and it tastes like you're drinking a you know a loaf of bread. Yeah, yeah, exactly. A meal in a glass, <laughs> exactly. It's funny. I was reading the ba- right. reading the back of the can here in the description, and uh, I misread it initially. And I thought it could just be interchangeable to describe the beer and me with a deep golden honey. And frothy white head. I was like, oh, that's almost me. That's almost me. But <laughs> deep golden honey hue and frothy white head. This mellow yet flavorful cream ale is highly sessionable. Okay, here's a question for you. Because, I, I mean, I drink a lot of beer, but I don't, I'm not really a beer connoisseur. Does sessionable, what, does it just mean like you could have like a million of these? Yeah, so se- the term session ale or anything that, that is sessionable is anything, basically for me, it's anything, well, for, for me, it's anything under 9%, but right. for most people, it's anything <laughs> under 5.5%. Oh, okay. Okay, so the idea is that the alcohol level is just a little bit lower or kept contained, right. as, as it were. Right, yeah, and and if, if you take it down even farther, so uh, they have, there's a classification of beers called table beers, which is anything 3% or lower, and a lot of, oh. a lot of traditional English style beers are actually technically table beers, because they were in the 25 to 3% range. Really? Yes. I did not know that, I did not know that. I, uh, so that's because I talk beer and you talk all <laughs> I just, all other things. I just drink. That's it. <laughs> that's right. You just drink it. Uh, it's a very nice beer, though. It's very tasty, and and I'm I'm glad that uh, you you suggested this because um, I'm unfamiliar with Spearhead Brewing Company, but I'm very familiar with Kingston, where they're from, uh, or Drinkston, as I call it. Um, Drinkston, yeah. And uh, it's a fantastic town. And it's exciting to have, a, I mean, there's so many breweries now and it's nice to find really great ones in places like Kingston and stuff like that. Like it's, it's, it's a tasty beer. It's good. It, it is. And, you know, I, I have yet to have a bad beer from, from these guys. Mm-hmm. There's several styles that I don't particularly care for because they're just not my style, Sure, but I've, I can't say that, you know, it was, it was poorly done. Uh, even if I didn't like it, it's like, yeah, they did, they, they did the style right. Mm-hmm. Um, their signature beer is uh, they've got a Hawaiian pale ale. So if you like uh, if, if you like tropical flavors oh. uh, and 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 a a pale style ale, so it's going to have a little bit of that hop hop bitterness on the end and things like that. Uh, it, it's fantastic. That's their signature beer. Does it taste like uh, a, they make like a Rattler? Like is it t- like that type of style or not quite? 
No, it no, it's it's definitely it's definitely not a rattler, which it's it's a beer it's a beer drinker's beer. It's not uh, it's not a summer sitting on the porch right. at thirty degrees and not wanting to get yourself completely blasted beer, right. uh, which is what rattlers are. Yeah, yeah. Because uh, rattler a uh, rattler is a beer. It's fifty percent beer, fifty percent juice. Right. So gotcha. Where whereas theirs, uh, it just it's uh, from from the hop varieties that they use in the beer, you get this tropical kind of pineapple flavor to it, and it's absolutely fantastic. Mm. And then they have its big brother, which is called Big Kahuna, mm-hmm. which is uh, which is an imperial uh, IPA. Which I'm not an IPA person, but it's a, it's a great IPA. Uh, they did a barrel aged version of it, uh, which I still actually have one bottle in my cooler from uh, 2020, I think it was. Oh wow! And uh, it was it was absolutely phenomenal. It was like you know it was a limited a limited release, and and I posted on Twitter like I finally find an IPA that I like, and it's a limited release. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I'm not I'm not a big fan of all the you know like most most of the people I, uh, that I'm friends with in the beer world. They're like they're heavy into their IPAs. They like their West Coast IPAs, yeah. the super hoppy stuff. And they like their East Coast IPAs for that really hazy, juicy, fruity stuff. And, and you know, I, I'm more of a traditionalist. If I'm going to have an IPA, it's going to be an old school English IPA where it's got that big, sweet punch in the mouth at first yeah. and then a bitter finish. <laughs> kind of like most relationships. <laughs> <laughs> Ouch. <laughs> Close to the nerve there. Um, it's interesting with the uh, uh, IPAs because I'm not a huge IPA person either. Like I'm not a big fan of IPAs. And then, of course, on uh, Twitter yesterday, there was a big uh, discussion about IPAs and uh, spurred on by a, a, a friend of mine who's a very talented comedian, uh, Hannah Pilkus, who did a video of a girl who's pretending to like IPAs. And I saw that and it was absolutely hilarious. She's so good where she just sort of like puts it to her mouth and then doesn't quite swallow it. And then it's dribbling down her chin a little bit. She's like, it was the, it was the, uh, the, the slightly grimaced uh, lips and the eye roll when she actually did take a sip of it. It's like, (laughs) (laughs) it cracked me up. Yeah. That, that was, that was, that was really funny. Oh, she's so I mean, I like I like most beer styles. Yeah. Um, but I'm not I'm really not an IPA kind of guy. I mean, I like my malt characteristics. So, you know, I tend towards uh things like this cream ale mm. or or one of my favorite styles is Martzens, which come out in October, uh, for Oktoberfest and right. things like that, and fest beers and things like that, because they have that that really sweet profile up front and then a little bit of bitterness on the back, or even not even any bitterness on the back, just a little flatness on the right. back. So. Right. Right. It's, I mean, like, it's, it's fascinating to me, uh, the different types of beer. Cause I mean, like I said, I, I enjoy beer a lot. Um, certainly it's a big part of, has been a big part of my life since I was been able to drink it. I remember my first pint ever was in a pub that my great grandfather used to go to in Scotland. And, uh, the uh, bartender was the guy who brought me in. I was 17. So I was under, I was a year underage in Britain. And, but it was an end of the night and the guy brought me in and was like, Hey, this is uh, Stuart Reynolds. And his great grandfather used to come to this pub, like back in like the 1910s, 1920s. And, uh, and he's never had a pint before. And he's like, Oh, and he poured me a pint of Guinness. And I remember thinking like the first couple of sips, I was like, I might die here. I just might die. Maybe this is where I'm dying. <laughs> and uh, I remember him saying vividly, he's like, Oh, just after the first one, it'll go down like milk. It'll go down like milk after the first one. And it has ever since. It really, really has. Ever since. But I mean, I don't have the palate to, like when you're saying to smell it, um, I think I maybe mentioned this last time I was on, but about maybe eight years ago, coming up on 10 years ago, I realized I'd lost my sense of smell. Now, update. I I feel it's slightly coming back because there have been certain times, like I was taking the laundry upstairs last week and i said to shannon and my wife i was like does this smell really good like i, I hadn't smelt clean laundry <laughs> like i didn't know i'd forgotten what it smells I was like god this smells amazing and then it made me realize that maybe i'm 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 i've got a benefit because it'd be overwhelming to smell stuff all the time like when you're sticking your nose in this glass that's me smelling i can't i can smell the glass you know what I mean? Like that sort of dishwasher glass sort of maybe a little bit, but I don't smell any, I don't smell any, anything at all. And I'm wondering if I'm right, missing now, out. 
probably. Now, see, when I when I stick my nose in this glass, yeah, do the same thing you did here, mm-hmm. the big old huffing sounds. Mm-hmm. I get uh, I get I get uh, a little bit of bread. Oh damn! I get it. a a, a little a, a little bit of a floral scent. And then uh, you know a little bit of like a crackery goodness to it too. I, I mean, got my it's, nose. It, it's nice, close enough to it. <laughs> just, 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 just pour it in your nose. I might just have pour to pour it in your nose. I can't. I mean, I maybe when you said bread, I was like maybe, but I'm only going now. now to be fair, yeah. to be fair, I am a certified beer nerd. I've actually taken uh, certification classes. I have my uh, my <clears throat> my. My level one Prodome <laughs> beer enthusiast certification. That's fantastic. So, what? How many levels are there? There are four. Um, right. Level one. Level one is beer enthusiast. Uh, I can't remember what level two is, but you know, you get to the end and and it's like uh, you know, master beer sommelier right. or something like That's that. That's pretty it's, cool. It's a, it yeah. It's it's funny. So the first class is like uh, eight weeks, and I think the second class, if you go for the second level, is like twelve. And then the third, the third level, I think is like, uh, it's like 16 what? weeks. And then the, the fourth, the fourth, uh, level is basically you go to school for a year. <laughs> That's crazy. So, uh, yeah, I mean, I, I can see like there's a, a need for it and there's a, uh, there's a market for it for sure. So what kind of things are they asking you in this thing? Like, what kind of, like, what are you doing? So, so level one is, is more about the social aspect of it, being able to, uh, being able to describe beers to people who, who might not be, uh, who might not know about beers, which is a lot like what my show is supposed to do is, is kind of inform people who might be a little trepidatious to, tr- to go outside their wheelhouse right. and try a, a new type of beer. You know, if you're, if you're the type of guy that all you drink is, is the big macros, yeah. like, you know, Labatt and, and Molson's and thing like that, you know, uh, the level one certification is, is the type of certification where you're like, Oh, well you like th- this style of beer. You might want to try this style of beer from right. a craft brewery because it'll have a similar flavor profile and it'll pair well with that cheeseburger that right. you're eating. Yeah. <laughs> That's fair. Yeah, I mean that's literally what what level one is all about. It's all about um, the social aspect of it. It's uh, it's about knowing knowing what the flavor profiles are, so you can explain them to other people. Right. So it's like, oh yeah, I'm getting you know like when I drink this beer, I get I get bread and dark fruits like figs and and and, and dates and mm-hmm. things like that. And and then you can you can relay that. And you're like, okay, so this would go well with you know with a steak or a burger or, or something. Or if you're drinking like, um, mm. if you're drinking, say like a, a Belgian quad, uh, which has, has those flavors. It has, you know, it has your, your dark fruits and, and your, your sweet malt profiles and, and things like that. You can say, well, this would go well with a grilled steak as opposed to a fried steak, or this would go well with, with, uh, you know, with, with, with like uh beef wellington because it's got that breadiness and it's got you know this which would or or if you if you're trying to uh determine a beer that would contrast with so so say you're eating something that's super high in in fats and really really decadent it's like oh well you might want something that's a little more um bitter to cut through that 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 fat content right. and things like that so it's it, it's it's that that's what that level of certification is it's it's uh being able to basically give suggestions on styles of beer and tell people what styles of beer are that might not be familiar with. So it. are you, are you a nightmare to go to a new pub with if a bunch of front, you and your friends go out, they're like, Oh God, Rob's with us. We have to get him. He's going to complain about this beer. He's going to. No, because I don't complain about beers unless they are really terrible. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, no, seriously. I'm, I'm, I'm the guy that's like, everyone's like, Hey, I'm thinking about trying this. I'm like, okay, well you should, it should taste like this. Right. And, and if it, if it doesn't, then there's something wrong with it. Right. Uh, that's, that's more of, of my style when I go to a brewery and, and if, if it doesn't taste the way I expect it to taste, you know, I'm, I'm also the guy that'll walk up and, and say, Hey, is the brewer around? Can I ask him what it was he was doing with this? Right. Why it doesn't taste like I expect it to taste. And you know, maybe there's a good reason for it. Maybe there isn't, I don't know fascinating so is there a reason like is there when you taste a beer that you don't think is good are you able to like think to yourself it's because they've done too much this or too little this yeah right Uh, a lot of the time yeah i mean and a lot of that is certification aside a lot of that has to do with the fact that i've drank a lot of beer (laughs) (laughs) and and i'm also i'm also a person who brews beer i mean right I've got, uh, you know, I've got, I've got 15 years of beer brewing under my belt. So yeah. I know, I know what beers 
should taste like what mm -hmm. and if they're if they deviate from what they're supposed to taste like is there a reason why it deviates and and you know yeah so i know a lot of the times like I'll, i've had like i had a beer from a brewery that i won't name that was a uh, an ipa that was supposed to be like a fruit salad style IPA. right so it's supposed to have all these different fruit flavors in it and it literally tasted like it was dirty dishwater right right and it and it was because the, um, they had just changed their recipe and they had switched over to using like liquid hops uh, concentrate mm. as opposed to using the pelletized or fresh hops. And uh, I, I think they didn't quite have the formulation right, right. Uh, because they had switched, switched products. And, you know, it probably would have been perfectly fine if they had the formulation a little better, but it did not taste good at all. <laughs> yeah well i it's a bill it's like a blessing and a curse see this you, you live like me nothing i can't smell anything so it doesn't matter it's like i don't know it's wet <laughs> that's right it sounds good i don't know does it does it get me drunk exactly <laughs> does it quench my thirst somewhat and does it get me a little tipsy fantastic let's go that's it so what's uh what's been going on in your life i know you're 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 a busy guy and uh we were talking about this and you were saying you were trying to find an assistant and all sorts mm -hmm. of stuff so i mean things must be looking up for the for for the brittle star well, in a weird way yeah assistance. i sort of feel like there's uh i'm at a stage now where i think i, I can't afford to stay still i can't i think I, it's i'm at a point now where it's like if i don't do something to keep moving forward I might be not be able to control everything that's happening, if that makes sense. Um, yep. So uh, I think just I've had enough experience doing other, like in our other businesses where it's been like, okay, you get to a point where like, I can no longer do everything myself. I need to find people to help. So like most recently, um, we've been working on this show that's going to go out and this is, it's going to sound weird, but it's true is that we're making a show for Snapchat Discover. Um, and Snapchat Discover is the Discover page on Snapchat, which has 10.5 million users daily in Canada, which is crazy to me that there's th a third of the country. Is, That's like a third of the population. Yeah, which is crazy. Yeah. Um, so, but anyway, it should be, it'll be interesting to see what happens, but it's essentially a, uh, essay style news thing, comedic news type show. Um, a little bit of a John Oliver, a little bit of a tre Trevor Noah, but with Canadian stuff as well. Um, so from the perspective of a Canadian, so uh, this week we're working on a story which will have come out now by, uh, about uh, DeSantis and Florida versus Disney and woke culture and, and all that kind of stuff <laughs> and how the fact that we're not quite positive he knows what woke culture means and also it might just end up making Disney even more woke and it's just all silly and, and kind of fun. And uh, we hired a researcher for that, which is great. So this is the first time where, because my biggest concern is is whenever I'm trying to do uh, anything that's news-based in general, political or what, otherwise, is making sure that when I'm trying to make a joke about something, I don't want to be like, well, that's not even right. He's made a joke about that, but that's not even correct. Uh, so I want to make sure I'm getting it correct. So it's been great working. This is my second week working with her. Her name's Rhea and she's fantastic and she's... Uh, she puts up with me during meetings and, and I'd say, well, here's a whole bunch of questions I have about this story. Go find out. She's like, okay, great. And she does that. <laughs> so I need more of those people. I need people to guide me and lead me now. I think I'm at that point now. So. Gotcha. So I can't help but noticing behind you, there's a bottle of S and G. There is. Uh, sitting on yeah. the shelf. Yes. Uh, for anyone who doesn't know, Brittle Star has a fantastic butter tart flavored vodka called s and thank you now it used to be it used to be what sex and gold but now you're just calling it just s and g well it's right? going to be it's being rebranded in like that label that you can see behind me over here um it, over there somewhere, over there yes. somewhere exactly <laughs> if you're just listening to this it's just i pointed over my left shoulder and my finger was directly by it <laughs> so you can imagine what that there looks you go. like perfect um dead on i right described <laughs> it very accurately um but that uh we we had we realized after and it sold it sold really really well which is great i'm very very thankful for that um but the problem is we were taking it into stores this year so it'll be in liquor stores across Canada and then hopefully eventually in the States by next year, next May. Um, it takes it such a long process. Uh, but we found the biggest issue was that people who, some people didn't know how to drink it. They were like, it's a butter tart flavored vodka. So it's like a liqueur. It's like, no, it's not a liqueur at all. It's more like a bourbon. It's more like a, a, a rye. It's more like that, except with just a hint of that butter tart sweetness a little bit. Um, 
So it's being rebranded as just S and G. We're losing the whole butter tart flavored vodka thing. It's just going to be a real, uh, a unique Canadian spirit with a hint of butter tart. And it's just going to be its own thing, which it kind of is. Um, so it's just going to be S and G, which is going to be, it is, yeah. going to be its own thing, which is really cool. And, and if anyone is interested, uh, take, uh, take, uh, you know, one part S and G and two parts, uh, ginger beer of your mm. choosing and mix it in a glass with some ice. And there you have my drink that I call the brittle star. Yes. And it's on the site. If you go to sexandgold.ca, sexandgold.ca, you'll see that in the cocktail recipe section. So. Yeah, there are some interesting, uh, interesting recipes there. Um, who I can't think of his name. The the other gentleman, um, R Richard Kraus. Yes, yeah. Richard Kraus. He he has some fantastic recipes for drinks, and you know, and it was interesting. Uh, I started following him after seeing. Oh right, seeing, yeah, uh, your, he's great. Your interaction, yeah, yeah, I love Richard, and he's he. He's great, and and you know he he has he has some interesting recipes for drinks as well. So. Oh, he does. He's I don't know if you I mean Richard's. I'll say first of all, Rich is fantastic, and uh, he's you know he's been a, a Canadian TV icon for over twenty years basically, and um, he's uh, he's got an amazing podcast as well where he just talks about different bars, which is fantastic. And he, one of my favorite episodes is the McSorley's one from New York in Manhattan. Um, and uh, talking about the history of McSorley's and all that kind of stuff. And it's really good. So he really knows his stuff. He used to be a bartender and all that kind of thing. Anyway, all that to say that he made this, uh, he likes bitter drinks, like very bitter tart uh, cocktails. And I've, I've had him make me a couple of cocktails before at his place, and they're great. They're fantastic. And then I, I, he had a, a couple of bottles of S&G and he was messing around with it. And he was like, this is perfect. I love this drink. And he actually texted me like late at night. And he was like, I've had like five of these now. And, <laughs> and they're really, really good. And I was like, I was so excited. So we put the recipe on the side. We tried it. Shannon and I went out, got, there's like red vermouth. There's uh, yep. uh, something else. What's the other thing? I can't remember. It doesn't matter. Uh, you can see it on the site. <laughs> and anyway, we put them together and it, we couldn't finish it. It was like, nope, I cannot get, it was like watching Hannah Pilkus drink the IPAs. It was like, <laughs> nope, nope, couldn't do it. Couldn't do it. So it's for much more uh, brave of heart than, than we were for sure. So, so, uh, is it safe to assume that you're not a Negroni fan then? Well, ex apparently, exactly. Cause he loves <laughs> Negronis, right? He loves like Richard loves Negronis <laughs> and it's essentially with the same type of taste, except with a little bit of this sweetness. And it's like, nope, I cannot. Right. That tastes like if you, if you had like, if you had eaten something poisonous and you were a child and the doctor gave you some liquid to make you vomit, that's what it would taste like <laughs> to me. Anyway, it does right. not to everyone. So. So I have a new mission then. Uh, when when I go back home to Illinois the next time, yeah. I'm going to stop at one of the local liquor stores and I'm going to pick you up a bottle of uh, Jessup's Malort. Uh, it, it, it's a it's it's a it's a it's a liqueur that's uh, made with wormwood yeah. um, that that has a very distinct flavor. Uh, <laughs> I, I I have been quoted as saying it tastes like month old gym socks oh <laughs> that sounds great i hope it's not a lot of money <laughs> uh no it's it's not it's a chicago staple so uh for for people who don't know i'm originally from uh, illinois uh about an hour northwest of chicago and malort is one of those uh one of those uh alcohols that is very very uh very chicago um, ask anybody who's ever tried it and you'll get one of two reactions. Either you'll get someone going, Ooh, or you'll get someone going, yeah, I've tried that. <laughs> <laughs> so that brings me to a great question for you. Like, is there, are there any beers that you've had with where you have like, Oh God, this is awful, but it's, not, but you're, but it's also a really good beer. I can tell it's a really good beer, but it's just not for me. Yeah. Uh, well, I mean, that's, that's most West coast IPAs. Right. Um, for me, um, just I, I am not a fan of that super bitter profile mm, that they have. Yeah. Um, I I can appreciate the effort that goes into them. I can appreciate the style of beer, but it is just not my thing. Um, and the same the same actually goes for most uh, Nipas or or East Coast IPAs. Um, because if if I'm going to drink an IPA, I want it to be a traditional IPA. You know. Um, New England IPAs are the right. IPAs for people who don't like IPAs. Right, right exactly. <laughs> <laughs> they they are they are they are juice bombs uh, for the most part. And and you know, 
hey, if if that's your thing, great. Sure. But it's just not my wheelhouse. My wheelhouse tends more towards the malty beers. Um, so you know, I like my porters, I like my stouts. Right. And as we've as everyone who's ever listened to any one of my shows or talked to me on Twitter knows, I like my barrel aged beers right. as well because I love I love the uh I love the higher alcohol stuff, but I also love the uh, the flavor profile that aging in a barrel imparts on a beer. It gives it that 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 oaky and vanilla flavors mm. and it, it tends to smooth out any rough edges and things like mm-hmm. that so that that's more my wheelhouse um uh you know i don't know i'm not i'm not a big fan of of, of a lot of the uh the more bitter styles of right beer, which is funny because one of my favorite styles of beers are actually called bitters and they're not but actually not actually bitter. bitter yeah yeah exactly <laughs> that was it there was a pub there's a pub in scotland in glasgow called uh, the saracen's head uh, are the Saudi heat. And, um, it's, uh, been there since 1770, I think. And it's a, it's, I mean, provided you're willing to overlook the risk of being stabbed. Um, it's pretty great. <laughs> it's a pretty great place to go. And I remember the last time we were in there was a number of years ago. Um, but, uh, Shannon, uh, sat down and I looked up and I was, I saw behind her in his cabinet, was the Saracen's head, meaning like this mummified head of some poor guy had been stuck in this cabinet for like 300 years. It's like, okay, all right, that's fine. Uh, And I also remember being there and being like, (laughs) should we use the washroom? And looking back at the washroom going, no, I'm obviously going to get stabbed if I use the washroom. So I won't be using the washroom here. (laughs) The washroom's down some dark alley. It's not even that. There's just a couple of guys in the back flicking knives around. And it's like, no, I don't need that. This is too obvious. I'm not an idiot. (laughs) <laughs> and uh, but I remember like vividly prepping myself the first time I went in to be like because my dad used to go there in the fifties and sixties and uh, and when he was young and and it's right across from the Barrowlands which is a big uh, like a market plus a big concert venue and all that kind of stuff and um, uh, he told me how tough it was and when I told him I was going there he's like you're crazy like you just don't go in and order something frilly like you have to be really tough. And so I had myself and a friend walked in the first time and I was like, uh, I'll have, uh, t- I just faked my biggest Scottish accent. I'll have two pints of beer, please. And she's like, two pints of beer. Uh, aye, that's what I'll have. Yeah, please. Thank you. Thank you. I mean, I looked like, not like that voice whatsoever. And, uh, <laughs> but I was like, I knew to order bitter. Uh, and I remember my friend Jason was with me. He's like, what is bitter? And I was like, I don't really know, but we're, that's what we're drinking. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah. So yeah, one of my favorite styles is uh, is bitters. Um, for for those who don't know, I actually have a show uh, that I'm recording in three days, mm-hmm. two days. I don't know on uh, ESBs, which is uh, extra strong or extra special bitter, depending mm, on which brewery, right which brewery you talk to. Because um, technically, ESB is a trademark of Fuller's. Um, I was going to so, say it's a London Pride, isn't it? London Pride, yeah. just like another thing, yeah. Yeah. So, how do you feel? Um, you were but, you looked disappointed when I said that. How do you feel about uh, London Pride? Because uh, I'm going to the UK. Hey. Is it more like a? Is it is it London Pride kind of like the the Molson Canadian of or the Labatt's Blue of English no, beers? It, 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 it's it's perfectly fine. I mean, there's, there, there's, <laughs> absolutely, there's absolutely nothing wrong with it. Yeah. Um, um, you know. I would I would seek out I would seek out uh, other venues myself uh-huh. or other other uh, other beers myself. But uh, you know if it was if, if someone if someone said hey, have this right and or 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 hey we're going here and they serve this I'd be like all right. <laughs> <laughs> so that, like what about here's another question for you what about in the states seeing as you're American what about Yingling how do you feel about them? You know Yingling used to be a fantastic beer because you couldn't get it. Yes, because it was only in like four states. That right. Was, yeah, and exactly. Then, and now that it's available everywhere, it's just... Is it? Eh. I didn't realize it was yeah, I mean, pretty much everywhere, though. Well, I mean, okay, yeah. So it, it, it's available in Illinois, which pretty much means it's available everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> if they've made it that far across the country, it's pretty right. much available right. everywhere. Yeah, and, and it, you know, there's nothing wrong with it. It's a perfectly fine beer. Um and it, it's it's a it, it's a light beer. It's got decent flavor. It's it's nothing. Uh, it's it's nothing special in and of yeah. itself. What made it special was the the rarity of it. Right, right. Yeah, I always felt like when you we go to Florida, because it's one of the states they would sell to, is that we would have Yingling in Florida. It's like that's my go to beer when I'm in Florida. I love Yingling all the time. 
And uh, yeah. I mean, I enjoyed it. It was, I mean, it seemed like out of all the American beers, it was the least, it was the most, uh, and I mean this in a good way, it's not the right word, but it was the most mealy tasting beer to me. Yeah. It tasted a little like you'd get your teeth into it. Yeah, yeah. It actually, it actually has a little bit of body and a little bit of flavor. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, unlike, unlike, uh, say, Miller or Bud or right. yeah. what, what have you. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and, and I mean, Yingling, Yingling's a, it's not a huge brewery, but they're, they're big. They're yeah. Not, they're definitely, they're definitely not a micro brewery. No. I mean, they're, they're, they're like straddling that line between, uh, between small and, and big breweries. So, but yeah, their beer is perfectly fine. And, and if someone hands me one, I'm not going to complain. I will drink <laughs> it. It's, it, 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 it. It's a good beer. Yeah. I mean, but like, like I said, the thing that made it special was the fact that, you know, oh, I, I, I went to Pennsylvania and I picked up some of this. Right. Or, exactly. You know. Yeah. Yeah, totally. I mean, we did that on the way back through Pennsylvania. We stopped in Scranton and we picked up like two cases of Yingling on the way back. Um, yeah. But uh, here, I, I want to share a secret shame with you. It's a secret shame. Uh-oh. If, it's a, if that's okay. And it's a beer related shame. Is that, of course, share away. my mother and father are immigrants to Canada, much like yourself. And uh, they came from Scotland. And of course, Scotland uh, celebrates its beer as well, very much so. Um, they're not all great, but there's lots of really good ones. Um, Guinness and Gun and uh, Innocent Gun, rather, Innocent Gun. And, uh, Innocent Gun, yes. And, uh, you know, Tenets is, mm, yeah, it's okay. It's all right. Um, but there's some good beers. There's some good beers for sure. And, uh, anyway, my mother and father, whenever they go to the pub now, uh, they'll get, uh, Coors Light (laughs) and to make it, to make it worse, they'll order Coors Light in Molson Canadian glasses because they like how the glasses are. They're easier to hold. So it's a double, it's a double damning basically is what it is. And I, I actually made a point a number of years ago to not order for them. Be like, can you get us a cut? Nope, you're going to have to order that yourself. I'm not doing it. It's gotten so <laughs> bad that their home drink, their home beer uh, is not Coors Light. Their home drinking beer is Molson Canadian. For whatever reason, there's, there's a separation between church and state here between <laughs> Coors Light at the pub and a Molson Canadian glass. And then at home, Molson Canadian. I forgive them. And I sort of say to them, maybe it's, I think to myself, maybe it's just, you know, it's immigrants trying to fit in. Maybe that's, they've been here since 1968, but maybe they're trying to fit in. I don't know. I'll leave it at that. But it's gotten to the point where my mother will send me to buy them beer and I'll go to the beer store and I'll say 24 tall cans of Canadian. And they'll go, how are mom and dad? And I'm like, thank you for asking. Cause you know, this is not for me. <laughs> that's hilarious. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, I, I, I can, I can sympathize with your secret shame. Uh-huh. Um, I, I, I have an uncle who, as far as I know, he might be retired by now, was a brewer at Coors. So, oh, right. Right. Uh, there, yeah. There was a lot of, there was a lot of Coors at our house. Uh, and, and, and I mean, to be fair, the first beer I ever had was, was a Coors banquet, uh, that, you know, cause they lived in golden Colorado and right. I was out there visiting and, and, uh, yeah, so you know, I, I understand, uh, but uh, you know, I feel your pain. <laughs> Thank you. I just wanted to get that off my chest. <laughs> it feels like I've been carrying that for a long time. So for for a long time, yeah. that, that's a, it's a heavy it's a heavy beer burden to to bear. It's such a friend. big part of our culture as well in our in our family. I remember the first time I was started to work at I live in Stratford, Ontario, which is the home of the Stratford Festival, which is a, it's and Justin Bieber and Justin Bieber. <laughs> And me and, uh, and, and, and Stuart Reynolds, exactly. that's right. Um, but the Stratford Festival is like North America's largest repertory theater, which means they have a, an ensemble cast. They, they go from like April until the end of November. And it's a big deal. It's the city's biggest employer. It's like 1600 employees or something. And, um, so it's a, it's a very venerable institution. It's seen like, you know, Christopher Plummer, it's seen, uh, William Shatner, Christopher Walken, it's seen, uh, you know, like lots of huge names of people. Alec Guinness was in the first few years of the theater as well. Uh, all that kind of stuff. And I had a job at the box office and my very first day, uh, at, on the job or go heading to work at the box office. My dad says, I'll drive you to work. And the night before was our high school prom. And I was never really a big drinker in high school. I didn't get into it. I was, I was pretty well behaved. And, uh, anyway, the, at the prom, uh, I had, I had some beer 
And my dad was driving me up what is called Snake Hill, which if you grew up in Stratford is a treacherous winding road up the park system. If you're from anywhere else in the world, it's a gently sloping, easy drive. <laughs> <laughs> but if you're from here, it's Snake Hill. Um, and uh, he was driving me up and I was like, stop the car. And I had to open the car and, and, and evacuate the, the contents from the night before onto half of the side of the car, a little bit on the door, mostly outside. And my dad said to me, I shut the door. I was like, okay, I'm all right. I'm all right. And I was in rough shape. I don't, I'm a big baby. And he said, uh, so how many, what did you, what did you drinking last night? Were you drinking? And I said, I just had some beers. I just had some beer. How much beer did you have? It was like, I had two Molson Canadians and he went, that's it. And that made you sick. <laughs> Pathetic. <laughs> Your dad sounds like my kind of guy. <laughs> yeah, well. <laughs> That's awesome. That's awesome. All right. So we have been talking for 40 minutes. I think that's probably prob probably enough for, for most people to put up with you and I, I bantering I so. back yeah, and forth. I think so. Twice the limit for <laughs> um, most. If, uh, if, if, if people are unfamiliar with you, uh, where can they find you on the socials, my friend? So that you can find me pretty much everywhere at Brittle Star. And uh, you'll see my beautiful face with my black rim glasses and you'll be prepared to be thrilled. I mean, mo most of your stuff is absolutely hilarious. Oh, thank I, you. I, I, my, my favorite bits are when, you, when you're doing the... Uh, when you're doing like the the minister of keeping it real type stuff, <laughs> I, I I love I love your 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 faux governmental announcements. They they Thank are you. always awesome. And in your latest your latest song, uh, the people are people are dumb. Yeah, uh, or people, people are stupid. stupid uh, people are dumb. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That that's the that song. That, like I said, well, I retweeted I retweeted your post and and uh, I repeated the uh, the last line. Uh, that sum that sums up the last few years for me. You know, it's a it's a never ending parade of dipshits. <laughs> sadly accurate, exactly. Sad, sadly accurate. All right. Well, if uh, if you've enjoyed this episode, uh, please like and subscribe. Uh, maybe maybe share it with your friends. Uh, if there's a beer or beer style you'd like me to discuss, actually to actually discuss. I mean, shows like ones I do here with Stuart are, are more about just kibitzing and, and and having a good time we talked a little bit about beer but if there's actually a beer style or a beer you want me to discuss please leave leave it in the comments below uh if you have questions for me or if you have questions for Stuart, leave them below i'll forward anything on to him that there is uh, other than that you know i'm rob from the internet cheers cheers <laughs>